DeSoto and the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers Coast to Coast present Groucho Marx. In You Bet Your Life. Groucho sent me to see the new DeSoto. Groucho sent me and I love to drive this car. It's long and low and roomier, so handsome you can see. It's powerful and I'm so glad that Groucho sent me. Listen to him when you hear Groucho say. So drive the new DeSoto at DeSoto Plymouth Dealers today. And now, here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! Oh, brother, what I know about him. Oh, that's me. Hi, <laughs> Well, here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples. And if any of them say the secret word, this duck we have up yonder will fly down and pay him $100. The word tonight is war. Okay, duck. Au revoir. He's a French duck. <laughs> Mr. Fenneman, begin, huh? Uh, Groucho, we have a cab driver for you. He's Mr. Maury Simon. His partner is a special guest, one of the great track and field coaches of all time, Mr. Dean Cromwell. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Well, uh... Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Dean Cromwell, eh? Anybody who reads the sport pages know who you are, Mr. Cromwell. You're a fine-looking fellow, Dean. How old are you? Well, my friends have been telling me for the past 20 years that I am 55. Well, you don't look any older. <laughs> Do you have any rules for keeping in such good condition? Yes, sir. Groucho, do not have any minor vices. Don't smoke, nor drink, nor use uh, swear words. No profanity, Groucho, no profanity. Well, those are admirable qualities, Dean. I don't use profanity either, unless, of course, I have to give up smoking. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's see. Uh, who are you again? I'm Maury Simon, Mr. Marks. Maury Simon? Oh, That's it. I see. Where are you from, uh, Maury? I was born behind a dairy that my dad owned in Cleveland, Ohio. Are you a baseball fan, Maury? Oh, I'm more than just a baseball fan. I used to work at the Cleveland Indian ballpark. I used to sell peanuts and popcorn and ice cream. Mm -hmm. Do you, you like to hear how I yelled? I used to vend. Used to, well, I'm not know. crazy about it, but I mean, if, you, <laughs> if it's an overwhelming desire you have, I tear loose. I hear the way you feel. Peanuts, popcorn, crack, jack, pies, and every pack. Then I used to have another one. No wonder they lost the wild series. <laughs> There's another one I used to have. I used to sell ice cream. Did I say that? I had to go. Sure. Ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. Bicker telling honey coated ice cream here. Cooling and refreshing. Enjoy the game of ice cream. Was this, was this written by Robert Browning? <laughs> Do people holler like that around where you uh, work, uh, Dean? No, no. Dean they're very, cream? very quiet because my sport is individual sport. I see. Well, let's get back. You've been track coach at uh, USC for 30 years, haven't you? 40 years, uh, Groucho. Oh, well, my watch has stopped. I... <laughs> Does a track coach give the boys a pep talk like they do in football in order to uh, steam them up to win? Uh, I always did, Groucho. Yes, I told each one of those boys that he was a champion. I called him champ. Told him that he was going to be better uh, tomorrow than he is today, that... Next year, he's going to be better than this year. Continually keep that word champion in front of him. Well, did you tell them this collectively? Individually. <laughs> and in the meantime, you keep them relaxed. Well, how do you do that? Do you, uh, oh, hit talk, them with a baseball bat or something? Uh, talk to them gently. Oftentimes, you can tell them a, a short story. Mm -hmm. Funny story? You know, it better be funny if you're going to keep them relaxed. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us one of these funny stories? Uh -oh. If the audience goes to sleep, we'll let Maury sell some more peanuts. <laughs> well, two old gentlemen in a bar sitting at a table in New York City. Uh, one gentleman says, I am uh, 85 years old, and I've never used glasses. The old other one said, why? And he says, I drink my liquor from a bottle. <laughs> Let's 
start the peanut thing once more, yeah. huh? Yeah. He not only sells them, he steams them. Eh? And the other old gentleman says... Oh, this is... Oh. The other old gentleman says... Oh, I'm sorry, Dean. Yeah. I thought that was all there was to it. Oh, this is... Uh, we're still going with the second one. Oh, I see. The other one says, I'm 86 and I have you beaten. I am 86 years old and I've never done a day's work in my life. But they got even with him. He died shortly after. They cremated him, put his ashes in an hourglass... And he's been working ever since. <laughs> you told this joke right before a track meet? Yes. Well, that joke would make anyone run fast. Yes. <laughs> Including the person who told it. <laughs> Dean, who are some of the famous... I like that joke. Thank you, Groucho. Thank it's you. not funny, but it's sincere. <laughs> well, Dean, who are some of the famous athletes you've helped to develop over the years? Uh, three of the greatest sprinters the world has ever seen, uh, Groucho. Uh, Charles W. Paddock, the first of the fastest humans, and then Frank Wyckoff, the next of the fastest humans that defeated every sprinter in the world, and then lastly, Melvin Patton, who now holds the world's record in the 100 yards and the 220 yards. And then, of course, the heavenly twins, Earl Meadows and Bill Sefton, that broke the world's record in the pole vault on an afternoon, about two minutes apart. Well, you've got quite a record. You were the coach of the United States Olympic team, weren't you, a few yes, years sir, back? Yes, sir. I was in London in 1948, an assistant coach in Amsterdam in 28, Los Angeles 32, Berlin in 36. Well, that's, that's quite a record, huh? The time has come for both of you to win some money here. I know that Dean is interested in that. Uh, uh, how about you, Murray? You uh, like money? Oh, I love it. Uh, well, we're going to start you off with $100. You have to try to add to that by answering four questions. If you miss a question, you lose half of your bankroll. Are you ready? I'm ready to Okay, you select, a, you select a general information quiz. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, what do you want to start with? 10, I 20, 50, 80, $50? Right? That's fine. Okay. $50. One answer between you. What famous American do you associate with Poor Richard's Almanac? <coughs> Talk Benjamin, it over. Benjamin Franklin. Yes. Benjamin Franklin. Oh, Ben Franklin is right. You now have $150. Okay, now what are you going to go for? 60. Sixty? Okay. Sixty? By what means of transportation did the crew of the Contiki arrive at their destination? It had a raft. It was a raft. George Raft is right. <laughs> we now have two hundred ten dollars. Yeah, you're getting a free ride here, Dean. Yeah. Huh? I'll try seventy or whatever you say. Whatever 70. you say. Is good. Okay. Seventy? What instrument is used to determine the altitude of an airplane? Altimeter? That's a uh, close one. You now have $280. Well, you're climbing. Is your last chance to beat the other couples? Let's what are you going to go for? Let's safe and make it uh, 40 $40. 40 How many fiddlers did old King Cole have? Old King Cole was mayor, told it, mayor, you Fiddlers three. Well, fiddlers three. You are absolutely right. Three fiddlers is right. <laughs> wind up with $320. Thanks, and good luck Thank to the Soto Plymouth dealers. Thank you. George, let's take a break for a minute. I want to see that beautiful car again, and you know the car I mean. I certainly do. So let's go out to the Chelsea Proving Grounds and see the magnificent new 1955 DeSoto. Well, here we are, and there's the car. The key word this year, Groucho, is style. Sleek, taut, modern style. This new DeSoto is mighty fast looking, eager and new and different. Designers talk about its taut surging feel and look of power. Well, to you and me, it just looks like it wants to get out and travel. This is the smartest DeSoto we have ever built. Longer, lower, and comfortably wider. Added inches give the car a long, slim, modern style that's new and different on the American scene. Take a look at the new smooth slope of the low hood. The big, graceful new grille. 
headlights, bumpers. Perfect examples of modern smart style. Huge glass areas, front and rear. Of course, this year again, DeSoto offers you your choice of all full power assist features. And hang on. This year, for the first time, DeSoto offers you two great V8 models. The mighty Fire Dome V8, now raised to a full 185 horsepower and at a completely new low price. And the super-powered Fire Flight V8, 200 horsepower worth of flashing automobile. Fire Dome or Fire Flight, DeSoto's really got it this year. See the 1955 DeSoto tomorrow at your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Mrs. Norma Ireland and Mrs. Uh, Mr. Thomas Craddock have some things to discuss with you, Groucho, right now. And here they are. Folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Betcha Live. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Norma Ireland and Tom Craddock. Mrs. Ireland, where are you from? Wadsworth, Ohio. Wadsworth? I thought you'd be from Ireland. Huh? Well, uh, could you give us some idea of your age? Well, 40-ish. 40-ish? Well, that's a nice age. <laughs> It's a nice age. You're young enough to have a future and old enough to have a past. <laughs> what sort of work does your husband do? I assume you're married. Yes, he is an industrial engineer for uh, California Institute of Technology, a Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. Well, that's a very imposing uh, list of titles. And let's see now, you're Thomas Craddock. Uh, yes. That's you, huh? Thomas Craddock. Yes. Where were you born, Tom? Mystic, Georgia. Mystic? Why do they name a town Mystic? Sir, it's a mystery to me. I don't know. <laughs> well, where is Mystic exactly? Oh, it's near Tifton. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that clears that up, all right. Now, where is Tifton? Near Mystic? Oh, it's about 30 miles from Valdosta. <laughs> Are we getting near anything yet? <laughs> well, you're about... Uh... 60 miles from Jacksonville. Jacksonville, huh? Yes. Now, now you're talking. Uh, Jacksonville, Florida, huh? Yes, sir. Are you married, Tom? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Is she a mystic girl? Most girls are, you know. No, sir. She's a Tifton. A Tifton, huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> what kind of work have you been doing since you left Mystic? <clears throat> oh, I've been farming, a little bit of everything, and worked for Fred Rice Rug Service. Oh. Must be cleaning up, huh? Yes, sir. Do you have any nice. other job besides the rugs? Oh, I sell jewelry on the side. Mm -hmm. Which side do you sell it on? <laughs> well, it's pretty... On business. the outside? Yes, sir. It's... Well, how is the jewelry uh, rack, uh, business? <laughs> well, it's pretty bad right now. Why is that? It's close to Christmas. There ought to be a lot of... Well, I've sold uh, three watches and one ring. Since, uh, since when? Oh, God, it's been a while. My wife, my wife bought the watch. And What's this? My wife bought one of the watches. Your wife bought the watch? And I bought the ring, but I... <laughs> but I still owe the man. I've been owing him for two months. For the ring. Tom, I think if you work real hard inside of six months, you could build your jewelry business into a shoestring. <laughs> Now, Mrs. Uh, Ireland, uh, are you a housewife? Yes, I am. Do you do anything special for relaxation? Any hobbies? Well, I'm an amateur contestant. You mean you've been on a lot of shows? Uh... No, not uh, not shows. I enter um, other kinds of contests. What, puzzle, what kind? Huh? Puzzle contests and limericks and statements and jingles. And... Have you ever won any of these contests? Well, I've won over 100 prizes, I think, that, which isn't... Uh, a large number at all. Well, uh, you must be pretty smart. How much money no. have you won? Um, Approximately. Between three and four thousand. Oh. What are some of the prizes you've won? You probably have 300 electric toasters at home. Right? No, I'm not that good. Uh, you have 200? <laughs> would, you, would you be interested in buying a watch here from... <laughs> Well, you're a nice young couple, and I wish both of you lots of luck. Norma, you ought to be a whiz at the quiz here. I'm a little scared of you. Oh, no. No, don't, don't give me such a disadvantage. I'm... <laughs> oh. Well, remember, we start you off with $100, and if you miss a question, you lose half of your bankroll, no matter what it amounts to at the time. Are you ready? In the race for the $1,000, the first couple won $320, and the secret word is wall. 
Yes. Okay, here we go. You select a dictionary quiz. Remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. <clears throat> Talk it over, and what do you want to start with? What do you want to start with? $100. $100. You're going to start with $100? Yes, sir. Okay, what is a leotard? L-E-O-T-A-R-D. Come on. A slow son. person or individual? No, it's a, it's a form-fitting garment worn by ballet dancers. Well, you lost half your original 100 You now have $50. Well, don't get discouraged. What are you going to go for now? None. Ninety? Okay, what is a lexicon? L-E-X-I-C-O-N. Dictionary? Dictionary? Dictionary is right. Dictionary is right. We now have $140. Now what? <clears throat> Eighty. What do you call the blanket or shawl worn over the shoulder by some of the people of Mexico? Time's up. Mandela? Mandela? Mantilla. No, it's a Serapi. Serapi. Well, you lost half the 140, you now have $70. All right, it's your last chance to be the up couples. What are you going to go for? 70. 70? Many universities have a Campanile. C A M P A N I L E. What is a Campanile? Is it a tower, clock tower? Well, that's close enough. It's a bell tower or a steeple, but we give you... And you wind up with $140. Thanks, and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. You took a tough category. Doctor, we invited a married couple to come to our show tonight. And... Always married couple. And if Reverend and Mrs. Carl Doss will come in, I'm sure you'll discover some... Uh, Pretty unusual topics of conversation. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Say the secret word. <laughs> Say the secret word and take home an extra $100. It's a common word, something you see around the house. Reverend and Mrs. Carl Dawes, eh? I don't think we've ever had a minister on the show before. I'm not really a coward, but I just may let you do all the talking here tonight. <laughs> Where are you from, Rev? And is that what I should call you? Reverend? Call me Carl. Carl, huh? I was born Carl in Long... No, just leave the Reverend off. Okay. I was born in Long Beach, grew up in Southern California. Oh. And Mrs. Dodd, what is your first name? Helen. Helen, well, that's good. Where's your church, uh, Carl? Well, at the present time, I'm not serving a church. I'm lecturing and preaching on invitation in churches throughout Southern California. Oh. You're sort of a guest conductor, huh? Yeah. <laughs> How long have you been married, Helen? 17 years. You have any children? Yes, I do. Boys or girls? I've got some of both. <laughs> how, old are, how old are these children? Well, um, Richard and Dorothy and Donald are 12, and uh, Teddy and Laura and Susan and Elaine are 9, and Wait Diane and you... Rita are 8. You had triplets and then you had quadruplets? Well, <laughs> they... Reverend, I admit you've got were... some pretty important contacts, but uh, <laughs> this is pretty hard to believe. Is this true, Helen? It, it wasn't as incredulous as it sounds because, well, I, like the triplets, they, they weren't really exactly triplets. Well, they're the same age, but um, one boy is uh, married. Well, he looks like my husband, and another you boy is bald? part Indian. <laughs> he was when he, when he was born. No. And uh, another boy's part Indian, and the other one of the of the three is uh, uh, Brazilian and Portuguese and English. And our baby is uh, only 100% American. He's Blackfoot Indian, and then some are Japanese. And well, it's pretty clear the whole thing. <laughs> but listen, before 50,000 pediatricians go out of their minds, you'd better explain this, Carl. What it's is very, this? It's very simple. We adopted me, 12 either. children. You've adopted 12 We've children, adopted and they're 12. all of different races and nationalities? <laughs> and they're all of different races and nationalities? Yes. 
I'm speechless with admiration. I think you should uh, get the handshake, really. Huh? <laughs> you have to do taking care of them, eh? Well, do the ra racial differences uh, present any problems, Helen? Well, the children don't really realize... Uh, well, they know it theoretically they're different, but it doesn't make any difference. For instance, the, the, the two oldest boys uh, always play cowboy and Indian, but the, the blonde, blue-eyed boy always plays the Indian, and the, co uh, the, the Indian always plays the cowboy. And, uh, when, when they must have fun chasing each other, huh? <laughs> well, that's wonderful. I'm sure there must be a story behind these youngsters, Carl. Could you tell us how all this happened? Well, when we were married, we wanted a uh, normal family, as any couple does. And when our doctor told us we couldn't have children of our own, we thought naively, well, we'll adopt them. And then we discovered that uh, for every normal, blue-eyed, blonde-haired youngster, there were a dozen or more couples waiting for that child but that the mixed-race children were classified unadoptable because neither race wanted them. So we started taking mixed-race children. Helen, I realize running your household must be a full-time job, but do you ever get a chance to relax? Do you have any hobbies like gardening? Or... I do gardening. Uh, really, my main hobby now, outside of taking care of the children, is uh, writing. I... Uh just finished writing a book about my family. It's called The Family Nobody Wanted. McCall had a, uh, a small part of it in their September and October issues. And when I'll is this book out. coming out? It's came. I mean, it's come. <laughs> <laughs> it's a past tense of come. <laughs> well, uh, is it on sale now in the bookstore? Uh -huh. it's, it's been on since September 22nd. It's well, all you people could do her a big favor by going out and buy one of these copies. Yeah, make a good Christmas little present. Brownie. Yes, it <laughs> makes a wonderful Christmas present, and it's a, a fine plea for tolerance. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you. <laughs> Gosh, we're polite around here. Oh. Reverend Doss, you have a wonderful family. Now, I want to ask you one question. With the experience you've had so far, would you do the same thing all over again? We sure would, Groucho. It's been uh, an enriching experience for us. We've discovered, for one thing, that all races are basically alike. That these differences that we uh, call racial differences that divide men are cultural differences. They're something that's acquired after birth. That's true. That all people are born alike. That's true. All people are born alike except Republicans and Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> They're as far apart as the two poles. <laughs> well, I think you've done something for your country that uh, is rarely equaled. You've uh, had a small League of Nations all of your own. And uh, it's too bad that more people don't do this. You know, we send a care package away for $10 or something to Korea or something. We think we've done a wonderful job. Now, someday in the far, far distant future, Reverend, and you too, Helen, when you're both face-to-face -face with St. Peter, you can certainly tell him that Groucho sent you. <laughs> Well, it's time to win a lot of money, and I think everybody in our audience, all 50 million of them, uh, they're all pulling for you, and that probably even includes the other contestants here tonight. All right, this is a, a dictionary quiz. In the race for the $1,000, Dean Cromwell and his partner are still leading with $320. Well, all right, what do you want to start with? $50, 60 80 100 10 easy ones. Let's live dangerously. <laughs> all right, what do you call the front or face of a building? Elevation. The front elevation. No, it's called a facade. F-A-C-A-D-E. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you lost okay. half your hundred dollars, you now have fifty dollars. Oh, come on now, enough of this nonsense. What are you going to go for now? Ninety. Ninety? What is the word for a remedy given to counteract the effects of a poison? Antidote. Antidote is right! <laughs> <laughs> you now have one hundred forty dollars. All right, now what are you going to go for? Eighty. Eighty? What do you call the sheath in which the blade of a dagger is enclosed? Scabbard. Scabbard is right. You now have two hundred twenty dollars. Seventy. You've had uh, eighty, ninety, and a hundred. Now you're going for seventy. What do you call seventy? What do you call the strips of wood that make up the sides of a barrel? Staves. Staves is right. <laughs> wind up with $290.
I'm a little crooked tonight, but I couldn't help it. Thanks and good luck, Mr. Soda Company. Well, you did pretty good. That means that Mr. Dean Cromwell and Mr. Simon, with $320, in just one minute get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. Come inside the most luxurious, stylish interiors in an automobile today. Inside the sparkling new 1955 DeSoto. Here's beauty and comfort at the height of fashion. DeSoto this year makes use of glamorous nylon glistening metallic thread fibers, the softest shoemaker's leathers, weaves and patterns that spell style and luxury. Smooth, gleaming chrome sets off the interiors. Interiors, incidentally, available in over two dozen color combinations. Here's the ultra-smart double cockpit effect of the brand new DeSoto instrument panel, in a class by itself for beauty. And set right on the instrument panel, the new flight control lever, Yes, inside or out, the new 1955 DeSoto will catch your eye with its up-to-the-second style and beauty. See it at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers now. DeSoto, styled for tomorrow. And here's the winning couple, Dean pardon Cromwell me, and his... Pardon me, George. Before you go ahead, we have something a little unusual here. During the commercial, we've been having a conference backstage about the quiz we just finished. We asked a question for which the correct answer is facade, F-A-C-A-D-E. Now, Mrs. Dorr said front elevation, and some of us feel that might be acceptable. So we think the best thing to do is to bring them back next week for a chance at an extra $1,000 question. But uh, Dean Cromwell and his partner uh, are still high for tonight and still get a chance at the $1,000 DeSoto Plymouth question tonight. Right. All right, gentlemen, come on in. Well, uh, Dean, we're through with the sprints now. We're up to the mile run here. Here it is. Most of the major countries of the world have well-known news services, like the Associated Press, United Press, and International News in this country. For $1,000, what is the famous news agency of England? Talking over. Ladies. I think so. What is the answer you two have decided upon? Reuters. Reuters is absolutely right. <laughs> they win $1,000 plus how much in the quiz, George? $320. Well, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Friends? Go in to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. Be sure to tune in next week, same time, same station, for Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life on television. On radio every Wednesday night. And don't miss the big Chrysler Corporation TV show each week on another network. The Arthritis and Rheumatism Foundation needs your help to stop the crippling effects of arthritis. Send your contribution to Arthritis, care of your local postmaster. And the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers, Coast to Coast, present Groucho Marx. In You Bet Your Life. Groucho sent me to see the...
the new DeSoto. Groucho sent me, and I love to drive this car. It's long and low and roomier, so handsome you can see. It's powerful, and I'm so glad that Groucho sent me. Listen to him when you hear Groucho say, Go drive the new DeSoto at DeSoto Plymouth Dealers today. Well, here I am again with $1,500 for one of our couples. And if any of them say the secret word, the duck will fly down and pay him $100. The word tonight is voice. All right, duck. Groucho, we invited some women lawyers to the show tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Beverly Rubens. Her partner is one of baseball's best-known figures, Mr. Charles Dressen. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. You? Chuck Dressen, of all people, huh? Well, welcome, folks, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word, and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Beverly Hills, uh, Rubens, huh? And uh, Charlie Dressen, well. Glad to meet you again, Chuck. Nice I haven't seen you too. for a long time, huh? Last time I saw you, you were in the bullpen. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to Washington this year, I understand. Is that true, uh, that's right, Gotcha. I'm going to manage the senators. Oh, well, you're going to have your hands full. Some of those senators in Washington are pretty hard to manage. <laughs> How do you think the Washington Ball Club will fare this year? I think we'll finish in first division. In other words, if you're lucky, you'll come in fourth, is that it? Well, I don't know. If you're lucky, we might go a little bit higher. But the other day, I see where Casey put me seven. Casey Stingle. Oh. Well, Wash, you know Washington, first in war, first in peace, and fourth in the American League. <laughs> Used to be last in the old days. Let's well, change that joke. Now, how long were you with Brooklyn before they threw you out, Chuck? <laughs> well, I think we might as well get right down to cases here. <laughs> Stop being polite, huh? First, they didn't throw me out. I was there in 1951, 1952, 1953. Yeah. What kind of a deal have you got with Washington now? Well, I got what I wanted with Washington. I got a two-year contract with the senators. Chuck, they slip one over on you. All the other senators get six years in Washington. <laughs> now, Chuck, do you mind if I palaver with your partner for a moment? Not at all. Go ahead. You're Beverly Rubens, That's huh? That's right, Groucho. Mm -hmm. And uh, it says here you're a, a lawyer? Mm-hmm. That's right. Well, I may invite you to go out and help me work on a case after the show. <laughs> you prefer scotch or bourbon? <laughs> Would you mind giving us your age, Beverly? And remember, the penalties for perjury are the same in this court as any other. Well, if I have a choice, Groucho, maybe I better not incriminate myself. Well, uh, are you single or married? In other words, are you looking or cooking? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I get fooled all the time. Well, I'm not cooking. Now, Beverly, how long have you been a lawyer? Well, Groucho, I passed the bar just this last December. I've heard the expression passing the bar many times, but I'm not just I'm not sure what it means. What happened when you passed the bar? Did some drunks inside whistle at you? Yeah, the bar that I was referring to was the state bar, Gaucho. That's oh. considered the best kind. Oh, I see. They have nothing but bonded stuff there. And after what it is, it's a written examination. Mm -hmm. And after I'd received notification that I had uh, passed the written examination. I attended the uh, ceremonies in January, where I was sworn in by Chief Justice Gibson of the uh, California State Supreme Court with 250 other attorneys here from Southern California. You say he swore you in? That's yes. a coincidence. Last time I faced him, he just cussed me out. <laughs> was there any more to the ceremony than just this man swearing at you? <laughs> well, yes, we had a... Uh, you do a maypole dance or anything like that? <laughs> Singing habeas corpus. Yeah. Well, uh, we, uh... All around the habeas corpus. Huh? <laughs> You've been there, I see. Well, I was, uh, I've been a habeas corpus for many years. <laughs> well, after we were... Uh... Last two years, I've just been a plain corpus. Huh? <laughs> uh, after we were sworn in by uh, the Chief Justice, we did have a talk from the representative of the uh, state bar, and uh, he gave us some tips on professional ethics and uh, honesty in the courtroom. Well, was he for him or against him? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to uh, more time to talk to you two, but now you're going to play your bet your life. Remember, we start you off with $100. You understand how to play this game, eh? And one answer between you. Okay. 
I wish you didn't take the sport quiz. Was it gone already, Joe? I don't Joe? know enough about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. You were with Brooklyn. Now, you selected me. <laughs> <laughs> You select a dictionary quiz, huh? It's a fine thing for a ball player. Remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. What do you want to start with? 10, 20, 50, all the way to 100. 80. 80. 80. 80. All right. What does the word ambulate mean? To walk about, move about. Yeah, that's right. That's very good and very smart. You're on your way. You have $180 now. What are you going to go for? Seventy dollars. Uh, what do you call the movable plate or valve in a stove or fireplace that is used to regulate the draft? The movable plate or valve in a stove or fireplace that is used to regulate the draft. The flue? No, it's a damper or a check. We lost half your 180, you now have 90 dollars. All right, now don't get discouraged. Now what are you going to go for? Sixty? Sixty? What is the fourth estate? The press. The press is right. Well, you now have one hundred fifty dollars. Okay, now you're climbing. Now what are you gonna go for? Ninety? Ninety? What do you call the board used by an artist on which he mixes his colors or pigments? No, the easel. The board used by an artist in which he mixes his colors or pigments. Thing like this. The, the easel? The palette. I'm sorry. Now what is it? The palette. Yeah, Eugene Palette, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and you wind up with $240. Chuck, you got home by a squeeze play. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. <laughs> My darling, years ago I promised that if you married me, I'd give you the moon and the stars. But I found the moon is a little out of my reach. Look out the window, darling. It's yours. The most beautiful car on the road. A new DeSoto. I know you've admired it many times, and you have wonderful taste. I know you like that new color sweep, as they call it, and a low, sleek look, and a big, wide, wonderful windshield. It's a beautiful car, not huge and overpowering, but fine and eager and smart. It suits you. And wait till you drive it, darling. It drives like a dream. It's so simple, so easy to handle. And what a wonderful response. That DeSoto takes off like a bird. Now you own a car you'll be proud to drive anywhere. Darling, here's one of the stars I promised you. Your new DeSoto. Every woman would love to have a new DeSoto the smartest of the smart cars. Drive a DeSoto before you decide. Groucho, we have a man who works for the county for you tonight. He's Mr. Lester Henthorne. His partner is Mrs. Janet Wong. Folks, could you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome uh, for, uh, to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Mrs. Janet Wang, eh? I, pre I presume that's you? That's my name. Oh. See, <laughs> I'm so smart, huh? Is that how you pronounce it, uh, Wang? Well, the Chinese call me Wang. Wang, And well, the Koreans call me Huang. And I the Americans see. call me Huang, but I, my name is Huang. Wang, well, I may be Wang, but I think you're wonderful. <laughs> Are you a Chinese-American, Janet? Oh, no, I'm Korean very much. Oh, is that so? Uh, where in Korea? North, South? Uh... Oh, South Korea. South Korea. Huh? There is a North Korea. Huh? Yeah. Let's hope someday it'll all be one Korea That's again. That's right. Huh? Now, where were you born in uh, Korea? Well, I was born in Seoul, Korea, but the Americans call it Seoul. Seoul. Huh? But uh, I came to America when three months old. Let's see, you're uh, Lester Henthorne? Lester Henthorne, Groucho. I have a rather peculiar name. Well, just I don't think so. Almost everybody is named Henthorne, huh? <laughs> well, just put a hen and a thorn together and you got it. That's true. And if you put a hen and a thorn together, you're going to have a pretty sick hen. <laughs> where are you from, Hen? I'm thorn. originally, Groucho, from Ohio, a little place in Ohio called Hannibal. Hannibal? Right along the Ohio River. Oh. 
What sort of work do you do? Well, I'm with the county agriculture department, pest control out You're a what? Pest control man for the Los Angeles, Los Angeles County Agricultural Department. You control pests? That's right, Groucho. What sort of pests do you control? Well, you mean like door-to-door -door salesmen? <laughs> no, Groucho, we control field rodents. The principal one is the uh, beachy eye ground squirrel. <laughs> what is the difference between a ground squirrel and a tree squirrel? Well, the tree squirrel, he lives principally in the trees, and the ground squirrel, he digs burrows and lives in the ground. <laughs> I've, so I've learned something there. I don't know what it is, but I've learned something. Now, there must be more difference than that, isn't it? Well, no. That's One, the only difference? That's the only difference. Well, how about gophers? Do you trap them? Well, we do some work on gophers, Groucho, on our freeways. And... Oh, there are plenty of them on the freeways. <laughs> plenty of rabbits on the freeways. <laughs> well, Mrs. Wong, let's get back to you. When was the last time you were in Korea? Janet? Uh, it was November 1949 to 1950. Oh, you were there during the war, huh? Oh, and how? <laughs> and how? That's a, is that a friend of yours? Or? Yes, my husband and I were invaded by the communists, were imprisoned for three months, and what an experience we've had. Oh, that must have been just awful, huh? They woke us up at uh, 4 o'clock in the morning, and they said, I'm gonna, we're going to kill you. They had us standing against the wall with our hands uplifted and guns pointing on our chest. And I said, well, like, this is it. I'm going to die. I was counting, and I don't know why, but God sent his angels, I guess, and saved our lives. Mm. First Division Marines liberated us, and that was really wonderful. Oh, that must have been a great deal. Those Greatest Marines, experience. Those Marines are pretty handy. To oh, have I think they're the best of the United States of America. Now, what are your plans for the future, Janet? Are you planning to go back to Korea? Oh, we have to. Our work is in Korea. We take care of over 165 abandoned babies and boys from teenage boys of Korea. Well, could you tell us something about your boys farm? What is it like? Is it anything like a girl's farm? Oh, no. It's the 40-acre land farm, and on it we have a little rabbits and chicken and ducks and a little cow. We have to feed, get some milk for the babies, too. Uh -huh. We have to get eggs for the babies. And we have pig. We started with one pig. We got 21 pigs. And chicken, <laughs> five pullets. We started uh, 800 laying chickens. So we have eggs to feed our babies twice a week. And I think that's wonderful. Yes, it is. And we have over 300 mouths to feed, and we must go, and, and that's our job, my husband and I. Well, you and your husband it. are engaged in just about the most important work I can think of. Well, this is one thing I want to remind you, Mr. Groucho. We are doing something for our boys. We are changing their lives. We are educating them, training them, and a little bit of democracy. We're giving the American names, Bobby, Tommy, and Henry, giving them bread, and everybody comes and visits us. They say, why, this is little America. Yeah, you're right. You're quite a gal, and I hope you knock us over for a lot of money tonight. All right, now let's play your bet your life. In the race for the $1,500, the first couple won $240, and the secret word is voice. You selected a biblical quiz. What do you want to start with? What do you think? From 10 to 100. 60. $60. Who did the daughter of the pharaoh find in a basket floating among the bulrushes? Moses. Old man Moses is right, huh? You're off to a good start. You have one hundred sixty dollars. Yes, now, what are you going to go for? Why do you want to cry? <laughs> hundred. To do what? Okay. All right. Hundred. What biblical leader brought the Israelites over Jordan into Canaan? Canaan. Joshua. Yes, and not only that, he fit the Battle of Jericho. <laughs> well, you now have two hundred sixty dollars. All right, $80. $80. $80. Who was David's close friend in the Bible? Jonathan. Jonathan is right. You now have $340. $340 is your last chance to be the other couples. What are you going to go for? 70. 70? 70? What country was referred to in the Bible as the land of bondage? Israel. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Talk it over. Egypt. Egypt. That's right. Egypt me out of $70 there. And you wind up with $410. Oh, Joshua, thanks and good luck to the soda Plymouth dealers. Roger, uh, Miss Kay Barker and Mr. Robert Bootson are waiting to talk to you. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Roger Marks. Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Say the secret word. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Miss Kay Barker and Robert Bootson, eh? Miss uh, Barker, this is the first time in my life I've ever stopped talking to a platinum blonde in order to talk to a man with whiskers. <laughs> Mr. Bootson, huh? Where are you from, Mr. Bootson? Well, uh, I'm Boots, and I'm from, uh, I'm a native of San Francisco, even though some people think I'm a native from Africa. Parents. No, I thought you came from the bush country. <laughs> How old are you, Boots? Well, boots, ar boots. around... Logging up and down again. Boots. Around 35, of course, I've been living 20 years in the hills and the mountains and the beaches, and they never caught up with me to send me my birth certificate, so I don't know how old I really am. Oh. You say you lived in the hills? That's How long? Right. Well, I lived there about uh, 20 years in caves and under trees and top of trees. Why were you living this, uh, like a hermit? Well, uh, uh, of course, I didn't have to pay any taxes living that way, and, uh, and uh, I, I felt very healthy up there. I mean, I uh, had a lot of air. I like a lot of air. Yes, you can get a lot of air there. <laughs> You mean one day the tax man came around and you, says, you threw the paper aside and says, well, me for the hill? That's right. Well, what did you eat when you were living like a caveman? Well, wild... Frozen chop suey? No, I ate uh, uh, wild berries and acorns and I'd climb high fig trees and eat sweet figs. I chased the birds away because they eat the sweetest. Yeah. And I ate sweet figs and grass. It's good for your eyes. Alfalfa. Cow's got good eyes. I want good eyes. That's right. You rarely see a cow with glasses. <laughs> And, uh, Boots, it, it's very difficult for me to pull myself away from you and talk to Miss Barker, attractive as she is, but, uh, your first name uh, is Kay? That's right, Gosho. Is that so? <laughs> where, where, where are you from, uh, Kay? Well, I'm from Blackpool, England. Oh, from Jolly Old England, eh? Yes. Oh. That's a seaside resort, you know. Are you married? No, I'm not, Gosho. You're not, huh? Mm -hmm. Do you have a job? Yes, I do. What, what do you do? Well, I'm a butcherette. A butcherette? Mm-hmm. What is a butcherette? Uh, well, a butcherette means You put the uh, uh, panties on lamb chops? No. Well, first of all, to be a butcherette, you have to belong to the meat cutters and butcher workers union. Oh. I'm a cashier, and I'm also on the deli. You're a deli, do you say? No, I'm on the deli. Are you a deli. piccadilly or a deli? No, I'm not a piccadilly. No, I'm on the deli. You're on the deli? <laughs> when I'm well, not Well, how long have you been on the deli? I mean, well, you look pretty good to me. Uh, four years now. Well, what is a deli? Delicatessen counter. <laughs> I thought you were hitting the old stuff or something. I don't know. How about you, Boots? You married? Yes, my wife's hiding somewhere out there. <laughs> She's probably swinging from a chandelier. Or <laughs> Where did you meet your wife? In a treetop or? A... Well, I met my wife out in San Francisco Beach, and I was beachcombing, and she was practicing her ballet, so I always dreamed of being in the Jinsky, so I went into my dance, and she got intrigued, so she decided to share the tree with me, so we decided to get married. We've been happy ever since. You mean you split a tree together? <laughs> well, when you got married, Boots, did your wife go along with this beachcombing life? Whoops. I mean, did she enjoy alfalfa and peanuts and that sort of thing? Well, she did for three months, but then afterwards the mosquitoes got her and they got peanuts. She got tired of peanuts and tired of climbing fig trees for her breakfast. So she said, I compromised and we, we got a half of a house. I mean, we got a little house, no. a little cottage, a room. <laughs> but do you have a job now? Yes, I'm a, uh, I'm a singing fruit peddler. I paddle figs and peanuts in the beaches in the desert. Bel Air, Beverly Hills, and I sing and peddle fruit. What kind of fruit? Well, I peddle figs and peanuts and razor blades. I mean, apples. 
What kind of a fruit is a razor blade? <laughs> well, show us how you sell your fruits and nuts, Boots. Right now? Not a very long sales talk. Just about one more second. One second will be enough. Hear ye, hear ye. Tree ripe and sweet figs, ladies and gentlemen. The birds eat them. I eat them. And I went a long way in life. Feed that all. Feed that all. Feed that all. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff he's selling is nuts, just listen to him. <laughs> well, who boots I admire? Uh, thank you. I want you to know that I admire a rugged individual as like God you. God bless you. Thank you. All right, now let's play your bet your life. In the race for the $1,500, Mrs. Wong and her partner are leading with $410. This is an old-fashioned spelling bee. You will get only one chance at the correct spelling and only one answer between you. Okay, now what are you going to start with? Seventy. 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 This is beard tickle. Uh... <laughs> Seventy dollars. All right, spell the word motif. Meaning the theme or dominant feature. Motif. Spell it and pronounce it. M O T I F F E. You spell it. M O T I F E. Motif. <laughs> no, I think about six more spellings will get it. But... <laughs> no, it's M O T I F. That's what I thought. I forget. You just, <laughs> you just got too elaborate with that word. That's all right, now don't get discouraged. No, what are you going to go uh, for? You lost half your hundred dollars. You now have fifty dollars. Now what are you going to go for? Twenty. She says 80, and I say 80. <laughs> okay, spell the word gnome, meaning a diminutive, a diminutive being like a dwarf or an elf. Gnome? Yeah. It's K. N-N-U-M-B? No. 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 N-O-M-B. N-Y-M-P-H. Chance. Here's the well, I'm sorry. You had a number of chances. It's, uh... I believe you lived in a tree, boot. <laughs> it's G N O M E. Oh. No. Well, you um, lost half your fifty dollars. You now have twenty-five dollars. Don't get discouraged. You're going to leave here flat broke. <laughs> No taxes, that's right. <laughs> the little ones are easy. The big ones are hard. The little ones? If little you ones? get near one, I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars? Fifty dollars? Okay. Spell the word committee, meaning a person or persons appointed to act upon some matter. Committee. C-O-M-M-I-T-T-E-E. -T -E. Right! Committee! <laughs> Climbing again, you now have seventy-five dollars. All right, now you've got seventy-five dollars. Last chance to beat the other couple. Shoot the works. He said shoot the works. Shoot the works. Shoot the works. Shoot All the right, works. don't blame me. All right, spell the word intelligible, meaning understandable. I n t e l l i g a b l e. Please no. let me do it. Go ahead, dear. Let's. I n t e l l i g i b l e. That is right. Oh. And you wind up with one hundred seventy-five dollars. Well, thanks and good luck, Minnesota Plymouth. Thank you. I got to buy. That was very good, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> right. And that means that Mrs. Wong and Mr. Henthorne, with four hundred ten dollars, in just one minute get the chance of the Minnesota Plymouth one thousand five hundred dollar question. <laughs> TV. Top value. TV. Top value. For a real buy in a used car, 
See your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. He's having a special anniversary sale, celebrating the anniversary of top value used cars. Let's take a look at some of these great DeSoto used cars in action. A DeSoto Plymouth dealer specializes in cars that were better engineered and better built. That's why they're better used cars. This 1952 DeSoto, for instance. The extra value that was originally built into it is still there. Remember how we described the 1952 DeSoto as a beautiful car and built for comfort? Those famous Auroflow shock absorbers smoothed out the bumpiest roads. They still do. And waterproof ignition helps you start your DeSoto on the rainiest days and keeps it operating in the dampest of weather. So great has been the demand for new 1955 DeSotos and Plymouths. Terrific trade-ins like this are now a top value buy. Now is the time to visit your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. He's having a special anniversary sale, celebrating the anniversary of top value used cars. Here's the winning couple, Groucho, Mrs. Wong, and Mr. Henthorne, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. All right, here we go for $1,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help from the audience. Although our national parks are understaffed and need more money to operate efficiently, more people visited them last year than ever before in history. For $1,500, which is the largest and oldest of our great national parks? Talk it over. What is the answer you two decided upon? Yellowstone. That is right, Yellowstone. <laughs> That's right, you win $1,500. And how much in the quiz, George? Uh, $410 in the quiz. That's $1,910. I know what you're going to do with your money. Oh, I know. But what are you going to do with yours, you pest well. man, you? Huh? <laughs> I'm going to send some money to my favorite uh, religious radio program, or uh, television program, and there's a family of, we know of this. You mean there is one more religious than this one? <laughs> I don't know, Gatsu, so could be. Send me 90% of it. No. And I'll send it to Korea. Good then, idea. all right. Well, I know a family of 12 living children. You do? And uh, Those are the best kind. Huh? The father don't make much money, and I'm going to help them. Well, congratulations from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. You bet your life. Friends, go in to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. Be sure to tune in next week, same time, same station, for Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life on television on radio every Wednesday night. And don't miss the big Chrysler Corporation TV show each week on another network. This is George Fenneman signing off with a message from the National Safety Council. See that children play only in approved play areas, never in the street or near moving traffic.
Well, here I am again with a chance for each of our couples to win $2,000. And if they're lucky, they may even get a crack at $10,000. If any of our couples say the secret word, the duck will drop down and pay him an extra hundred dollars. The word tonight is head. Okay, Doug, beat it. All right, George, who's first for DeSoto? Jan Dietrich and uh, John Rose are all set to talk to you, Groucho. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life, say the secret word, and you each win an extra fifty dollars. It's a common word, something you see every day. Jan Dietrich and John Rose, eh? John Rose, that's a simple declarative, isn't it? I believe so, Groucho, but uh, the name is Reese, R-O-E-S-E, -E, Johnny Reese. Johnny Reese, when you, you spell it, R-O-S-E? R-O-E-S-E. R-O-E-S-E. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Jan, you're a mighty, mighty pretty girl, and I have a question to ask you. Are you married? No, I'm not, Groucho. How old are you, Jan? I'm 29. Were you named after January? No, it's, uh, my full name is Janet. Oh. Jan is a nickname. Oh, I see. Do you have a job, uh, Jan? Yes, I'm a commercial airplane pilot. Pilot? You look more like a hostess. Uh, with a mostess. Uh. <laughs> Who do you work for, Jan? I'm head of the flight department for the Air Oasis Company at Long Beach Airport. Uh, they are the largest distributor in the world for Cessna aircraft, and Cessna is the largest light plane manufacturer in the world. Mm -hmm. Well, that's enough of that commercial. <laughs> <laughs> How much do you get for one of these... Uh, these uh, planes? Uh, they range from about $9,000 to about $56,000. 56000 for yes, a single-seater? No, that's for the twin-engine five-place Cessna 310. Oh. It's a beautiful airplane. Well, I should think so. If I paid $56,000 for an airplane, it would have so many mortgages on it, I couldn't get it off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you from, uh, Jan? I was born in San Francisco, and I went to the University of California. Oh, San Francisco. Did you know Mr. Fenneman? Did you know that Mr. Fenneman's yes. from San Francisco? Mm -hmm. Yes. He's very well known up there. That's why he had to come down here. <laughs> <laughs> and you are, uh... Yeah, Rose, Grouch. You're John. You're John. <laughs> <laughs> are you related to Billy Rose? No, Grouch. It's still Reese. No. Related to roses are red, violets are blue, Horse, sugar. Huh? Horses, Nick, do you? <laughs> well, you're certainly getting jokes from an unexpected quarter here. Huh? Horses, Nick, do you? Huh? Where do you live, John? Uh, Gretchen, for the past ten years, I've been living in Azusa, California. Azusa? I thought that was a cracker. <laughs> what made you decide to live in Azusa as opposed to Paris or London? Well, Gretchen. Uh... <laughs> That's a logical question. <laughs> why, did, why did you live there? You just love the town, is that it? Well, Groucho, when uh, Jack Benny used to uh, do a lot of gags about Azusa on his program, I heard yeah. so many of them, I decided to go out there and look around, and, and I found a lot. I built an adobe house on it, and that's where I live. Oh. <laughs> You're lucky Benny didn't mention out of Mongolia. <laughs> <laughs> Are you married? Uh? Yes, Groucho, I'm... Uh... How long have you been married? Uh, six months. Is this your first time out? Uh, yes, Groucho, it is. Where'd you go on your honeymoon? Did you go to Cucamonga? Or... Uh, no, we spent uh, three days at the Convention of the Eagles. <laughs> well, did you fly around there much? Or... No, Groucho, I, I was a pretty busy man up there, and I didn't have much time to see my wife at all. I, oh. Hope she enjoyed herself. I think she did. Well, could a moose go there or an elk? Or... Yes, if he was an eagle, too. Oh. Why did you go to an eagle's convention on your honeymoon? Well, because I'm an eagle. <laughs> Where would you have gone if you were an elk? I'd gone to an elk's convention. Oh, I thought maybe you'd hang over a fireplace. <laughs> Well, let's get back to your planes, Janet. Uh, how much did you say they cost? Uh, they run from about $9,000 to $56,000. Well, I don't care how they run. The question is, will they fly? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> what makes a plane stay up in the air? I never could figure it out. The lift from the air holds the, the wing up. Air is very dense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what was that last thing? The air is what? Dense. <laughs> Well, I'd love to. Do you care to waltz or rumba? 
Well, I don't understand about air being dense. How, how dense is the air? Is it as dense as the sucker who forks over $56,000? <laughs> well, a bathtub full of air weighs about two pounds. I've never flown on one of those. <laughs> I was sucked down the drain once. <laughs> I, I, don't, I didn't know that, that a bathtub full of air weighed... Uh... You know, when I take a bath, I always put water in it. <laughs> do you understand what she's saying, Mr. Reese? Yes, I do, got you. You do? Well, would you explain it to me? I don't... Well, the wing goes over the lift... I mean, the air goes over the lift of the wing, over the top, and creates a vacuum underneath that helps lift the plane, and there's also air underneath which helps push it up. Well, as an eagle, I guess you'd know a lot about flying. <laughs> Do you do any, uh, have you ever done any flying, uh, Johnny? Uh, yes, got a little. I had about 45 minutes of stick, and I was also a stuntman on Old Jenny. Really? Did you know Old Jenny? <laughs> <laughs> Jenny Airplane got you. I've done many a stunt with Old Jenny. <laughs> we had a high old time together. Well, I'd like to continue talking to you about the Eagles and Old Jenny, but it's time for you to win some money. So let's pay you bet your life. Uh, uh, you selected uh, food and cooking, right? If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. What food is more widely grown and used than any other food? No. No, potato. No, potato. Wheat. Come on, kids. Wheat? I think it's a potato. One answer. Wheat. No, it's, it's rice. Oh. Well, you're off to a flying start. You got one wrong. You get one more wrong, and you're out. You can't get a better deal than that any place. <laughs> All right, now let's see what you can do with that. What kind of seeds are used in rye bread? One answer now. Talk it over. Okay, caraway seed? That's right. Caraway back to old Virginia. You're on the right track now. Three more right, you'll have $1,000. What is a ragu? R-A-G-O-U-T. It's kind of a stew. It's kind of a stew. Are you referring to Mr. Fenneman, or is this the answer? That's right, a ragu is a stew. You're halfway to $1,000. All right, what are Jonathan's, Gravenstein's, or Gravenstein's, and Northern Spies? Apples. Hopples, that's right. Hopples. One more right, and you'll have $1,000. You, did you know that a Gravenstein a, a day will keep the doctor away? <laughs> All right, how many standard cups of granulated sugar are in one pound? How many cups? Have you never been in your cups, Mr. Reese? What's this size package? Come on, kids. Time is fleeting. Um, no, it's clear. Number how many standard oh, cups of granulated nine. sugar are in one pound? Two cups. Two cups. Take a guess. Two cups. Two cups is right. And How easy it was? Four in a row right, so you win $1,000. There you are. You <laughs> it. Wait a minute. Come back here. You won $1,000. Now, you can keep it and quit, or else you can come back later and try to double your money, and you might even get a crack at $10,000. So go over there and think it over. No matter what your decision is, thanks for being on the show. Thanks, guys. Out of it. Here's the beautiful motion picture star, Jean Cray. Hello. I'd like to show you something I'm very proud of. This is my new DeSoto. Isn't it beautiful? It's long and lovely and long. Almost a foot lower than I am, and I'm only five feet five. I think its styling is outstanding, and these new fins are really striking. And what's more, my DeSoto is fun to drive, even in heavy traffic. It's so easy to handle. DeSoto's full-time power steering is the best I've ever tried. Of course, push-button driving is a wonderful improvement. It's so simple. And the way my DeSoto rides, you just won't believe it until you try it. As you may have gathered, I'm very pleased with my new DeSoto. I've paid a lot more for cars, but this new DeSoto is the most exciting car I've ever had. It's the most exciting car in the world today. The 1957 DeSoto. George, who's next for DeSoto? 
Groucho, Mrs. Uh, Nina Morgan and Mr. Nicky Stewart are waiting to talk to you, so folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your bet your life. Say the secret word and you each get an extra $50. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Now, let's see. Nina or Nina? Nina. What is your hometown, Nina? Napoli. Napoli? Italy. Oh, you're from Italy, huh? Yes. How long have you been over here? Ten years. Ten years? What mm -hmm. was your reason for coming to this country? I assume you had a reason, huh? I sure have. I had... I met a soldier. I met him in a dance hall. In Italy? Yes. I thought he went over there to fight. <laughs> I guess he did. He fought. He was fighting in a dance hall? No, 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 no. He was fight after the war was over. Oh. He mm -hmm. went right from the war to a dance hall? Yes. Oh, well, no. <laughs> he didn't fool around, this guy. Did he? he sure did. <laughs> Just dropped his musket? <laughs> We've had war brides on our show in the past, you know, and often they tell us that they had trouble getting into this country. Did you Well, have any not trouble? me. I was one of the 500 girls they came over on a, on a boat. 500 girls? Yes. War uh -huh. brides? We all were brides. And their husbands were on the boat, too? No, sir, but we should have a good time. <laughs> 500 young brides all alone? All alone. That crew must have worked for nothing. <laughs> I'll bet that's the only ship that ever ran out of gas six times in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> well, how'd you like this trip? Was it exciting? It was really exciting, but it's not as excited that um, the last trip I made. I was on You made another trip on yes. the boat? Yes. Mm-hmm. And I was on Andrea Dory, you know, the you ship is sunk. On the Andrea Dory? Mm -hmm. And it was sunk. Oh, yeah. It sunk. I, I know just how you felt. I was in the stock market when it sank in 20... <laughs> Well, that's very interesting. You're a survivor of the Andrea Dora, you were very lucky. I what was. What did you do when this disaster struck? Well, I was sleeping downstairs, and uh, when I heard you mean the... under the boat? No, in bed. Oh. And uh, when I heard the wreck, and I run upstairs with my pajama, and with the... I have a curl in my head. You had what? Curl in my head. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, Anthony Eden. <laughs> you better beat it. The audience is full of Egyptians here tonight. <laughs> well, you said the secret word, which is uh, curl on my head, so you get $50, and uh, you get $50. Thank you. See how nice it is? It sure is. Now then, tell us what happened. Well, you I... You were curling your hair? When I had, you... Yes. I had my curl on my head, and I had just pajamas. When I went upstairs, everybody said, outside, outside, so I went too. And I slide down, then we got in a line and we slide down on a rope. You slid on a rope mm -hmm. off the boat? Wasn't it pretty chilly in the boat with pajamas? Y yes, on? and I was all, I got all wet somehow, I don't know how, but I well, was... Well, it's, I don't understand <laughs> that. I don't see how anybody can get wet in the ocean. <laughs> now then, uh, your name is uh, Nina Morgan? <laughs> That's Nina Morgan. Oh, your name is, oh, no, your name is Nike Stewart, huh? Nicky Stewart. Oh, Nicky Stewart. Nicky Stewart. And you're, well, where are you from, Nick? I'm from the Bronx, New York. From the Bronx? What kind of work do you do, Nick? Well, I'm a personal manager. I represent uh, show people. Oh, personal. Well, I know what that is, but perhaps some of our listeners don't. We have an audience full of Egyptians here tonight. <laughs> Could you tell us what a personal manager does and also explain how is it you manage to stay out of jail? <laughs> well, a personal manager is uh, uh, a man who is supposed to project the talents uh, and the name of a certain personality that may be under contract to him. He looks at us uh, for um, guidance. guidance, and we must always act in a fiduciary manner to I protect beg our... Would you <laughs> mind giving me that again? I said we must always act <laughs> in a fiduciary manner in order to protect our client. Well, the audience times. knows what that means, but I don't. Would you, mind, would you mind explaining that to me? Well, uh, you mean fiduciary? Yeah. Well, fiduciary uh, uh, is a statement that is printed on all contract, personal contracts, which means that you must at all times... Uh, this is in very small print, isn't it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it means that you must be honest with your client and you must not scheme for your own personal gains at any time. Well, how do you make a living? Uh, <laughs> 
Supposing a personal manager wanted to steal an honest dollar here and there from his client, how, how is that done? Well, as I say, I've never done it, but uh, in well, the give, place us, a, give us a for instance. <laughs> you make me this, sound guilty. No, 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 no. This, I want you to present purely a hypothetical case. All right. Well, in, in the uh, grapevine, uh, there are several, you, you hear things like this. There are several unorthodox personal managers who... What do you uh, mean? They don't wear a hat? <laughs> <laughs> probably do. It belongs to the client. <laughs> but, uh, what, what they do is they... Uh, uh, here's how they would do it, as I have heard. Uh, <laughs> for instance, if I were trying to get one of my clients, like Joe Venuti happens to be one of my clients, uh, ask the owner or the booking agent in charge for dinner and uh, probably spend a few dollars on him. And uh, I would say that I spent uh, $500 on uh, entertainment uh -huh. and when uh, maybe I only spent $50. I That's see. tabbing. Yeah. And as I say, there are some of these personal managers who are more or less in cahoots and they do work things out like that. Well, but I've I, never done this. I, I'm never sure you have. No, I'm sure you've never swindled a client. Never, never. But uh, it's pretty obvious you've given it some serious thought. <laughs> Let's say that you were my personal manager, Nick. Just how would you go about giving me a, a, one of those big build-ups? Well, first thing I'd do for you, uh, Groucho, would be get you a brand new audience. <laughs> I, uh, what do I need a new audience for? Well, what's, what's the matter with the one I've got now? Huh? Well, I'd, uh, what I what's would What's the trade-in value on this group? <laughs> well, what I mean I, by... I ought to get a pretty good trade-in, Nick, because this <laughs> audience has only been driven by a little old lady who lives in Pasadena. <laughs> Well, anyway, what would you do? Well, I would, uh, I would uh, put you on, uh, send you out on tour, first of all, to the largest nightclubs in, uh, in the country. I would project your uh, likeness, your name, and your personality in all high schools, colleges. I would uh, get you a new audience, a, a, a youthful audience, uh, the new uh, youth the new today. Crowd, huh? The new crowd. The hoodlums, huh? <laughs> well, they watch television, too. They you don't want a uh, kind of a conservative group of antiques like we have here tonight. <laughs> what makes you so sure that there are lots of people who don't know me? Well, I, I'll give you a personal uh, uh, example My name of is that. Legion. Groucho Legion. That's my full name. <laughs> uh, about, uh, about, well, several months ago, my daughter, Tisha, she's only 10 years old, and uh, I was sitting in the den, and she came in, and she has a little uh, television in her room, and she called me. She says, Daddy, why don't you come on in? She says, you used to be in the business. I want you to watch the brand new comedian. And uh, I went into the room to watch it, and there it was, the Groucho Show. <laughs> so uh, I says, honey, I says, uh, this man is funny, but uh, he was a star before I was born. <laughs> Just a moment, Nick, old boy. Uh, <laughs> how old are you? Uh, I'll be 39 tonight. 39. And you tell your kid I was a big star before you were born? <laughs> I've just decided I'm going to hire you as my manager. <laughs> just so I can fire you 10 seconds later. <laughs> Actually, 10-year-old children love me, Nick. I know they do. And you know why? Because my show goes on right after dinner and they don't have to do their homework. <laughs> How'd you ever get into this soft racket, just collecting money from talent? Well, I originally started out as a hoofer, what we call in the business a hoofer. I was mean a dancer. Were... Oh. Now, Nina, let's get back to you. What sort of interest do you have aside from keeping house? Well, I, I work in the coffee shop at Bob's Drive-In. I sell big boys. You sell big boys what? That's an incomplete statement. <laughs> what do you boys. sell them, huh? Big boys. You they, sell I big think boys they all coffee? Know what it is. Huh? I bet a lot of people know what it is. What? Well, what, do you know what a big boy is? Uh, well, it can be a, a large youth. Isn't that Lord Blizz? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? It's a large youth with a hamburger? I don't call hamburgers. We're not allowed to say that. Oh. They're big boys. Well, that's like on the airlines. You, don't, you never say it's rough. No. <laughs> they have a euphemism uh, that they use. Uh, it's turbulent. <laughs> this is the age of the euphemism, you know. No such thing as a, an undertaker. Nobody buries you anymore. You can die now and get buried, and you don't know who did it anymore. 
Turns out to be a, what do they call him now? The uh, undertaker? Well, they have a fancy name for it now. Well, I can't think of it anymore. Well, is that what you always want to do, hawk hamburgers? Well, no, do you have I, any other ambitions? Oh, I should have. I um, always have a secret ambition. I want to be a dancer. You want to be a dancer? I always want to. Oh, well, uh, are you a good dancer? Well, well, how would you handle a situation like this, Nick? Here's a girl who wants to be a dancer. Could you, what could you do for her? Well, I'd have to see what what, uh, what she could do in dancing. Well, and you told me you used to be a dancer. Yeah, well, what I... What kind of music? Could you dance with her? I sure could if... Uh, if, if oh, it's called a mortuary. That's what I... <laughs> I could dance with her if uh, if the boys would give me some rhythm music. You mean the, mu the musicians? We we have a loose expression <laughs> for them. We call them musicians. Eh? <laughs> what kind of music would you require? Some type of rhythm music. Rock and roll. You some mean? rock and roll. Yeah. That's <laughs> can you give them some rock and roll? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> can you give them some rock and roll, Jack? You two make quite a team. What's your opinion, <coughs> Nick? I think she's real gone. Yeah, she is. <laughs> no, she's still here, but what's your... <laughs> well, I'd like to go on talking to you, but now let's give you a chance to win some money. You both know how we play You Bet Your Life? Yes. Now, we want one answer between you on all these questions. You selected professions of famous people. I'll ask you some questions. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. You ready? What was the famous Nijinsky's profession? You said Dudish. Now well, she talks to me in Italian. <laughs> uh, uh, he was a dancer, I believe. Yeah, that's true. He was a dancer. One right, three more, and you'll have a thousand dollars. Now, what was Hippocrates' profession? You remember the Hippocratic <laughs> Oath? <laughs> Hippocrates. <laughs> He was the father of medicine. He was a doctor. Oh, yeah. It's up in every doctor's office. You see that oath up there, the Hippocratic Oath? One wrong now. Don't get another one wrong or you'll be out of the game. <laughs> are you a Hippocrat? Uh, <laughs> or are you a Republican? <laughs> <laughs> All right. With what profession is the name of Jacques Fath connected? F-A-T-H. J-A-C-Q-U-E-S, capital F-A-T-H. With what profession? An actor, I'll just, I'll just throw. No, he was a dress designer, very famous. Well, you got two wrong in a row, so you're out of the game. Oh, I'm sorry you missed two in a row, so you're all through. Well, we don't want you to go away empty-handed. I'm going to ask you one question for a hundred dollars. You ready? What was Doctor Defoe's profession? <laughs> He was a Hippocratic oath. <laughs> well, I'm sorry you didn't win more, but you won the secret way. That's $100 and 100 for this, so you got $200. Thank Thanks you. for being with us. Sorry you didn't win more. You bet your luck. Now, in just one minute, we'll find out if our first couple, Mrs. Dietrich and Mr. Reese, will risk half their winnings on a chance at $10,000. Now I'd like to show you something important. This is a picture of the most exciting value in cars today. This is it, the 57 DeSoto with a new low price. This year's DeSoto was way ahead of our competitors. And yet DeSoto prices start right above the lowest. It's a big car with big car comfort and big car beauty that our competitors will be imitating two or three years from now. It's low, lower than any of our competitors, but it's got as much or more room inside as any of the cars that are much taller. And plenty of road clearance, too. It's really got power and terrific performance. And that new torsion air ride is so smooth, you'll find it hard to believe. Then there's new triple range push button driving. One or two cars are imitating that now, and others will follow, but this is by far the best. 
Now, I'm not telling you to run right out and buy a DeSoto on my recommendation, but I believe you'll be a wiser automobile buyer if you'll drive this car. See what it has to offer and price it. And I think you'll be surprised because this year DeSoto prices start just above the lowest. Then make your decision. Drive a DeSoto before you decide. George, we're ready to see who's going to get a crack at all this money. What's the story on our first couple? Well, as you know, our last couple didn't qualify, but our first couple did. And they've decided to risk half their earnings on a chance at $10,000, and here they are. Dan Dietrich and John Reese. Yes, Rose. <laughs> Rose, his name is. <laughs> Reese. Are you ready? You've decided to go for the big question. Remember you missed it? You wind up with $500. Are you still going to go for the big money? Mm -hmm. Okay. There are 10 numbers in this wheel. I want you to get together and pick a number. Any number you want from 1 to 10. One of you pick the number and one spin the wheel. Take a number. There's Five. only 10. Five. Five. Give it a 12. Your number was five and you landed on seven. You ready? You got 15 seconds and one answer. The American soldier is named G.I. or Doughboy. For $2,000, what do the British call their army privates? Talk it over. What is the answer you've decided upon? Tommy's. Tommy is right. Tommy Atkins. Tommy. <laughs> so you win two thousand dollars. Congratulations and thanks for being with us. You bet your life. <laughs> Friends. Go in and see a DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. Next week, Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life will be brought to you by the makers of Prom Home Permanent. This is my family album. And this is my brother Hoppo. He's always chasing the girls. But to no more, now he's a teller the girls about creamy prom. Because prom home permanent is a waving cream. Leaves your hair soft and like a silk. <gasps> Look at the way the waver. She's a bounce back every time. Hey, lady, wouldn't you like your wave behavior like this? You get a creamy prom. Right, Hoppo? Sure to tune in again next week for Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. Don't miss Chrysler Corporation's big TV show on another network. This is George Fenneman reminding you to listen to You Bet Your Life every Saturday afternoon on NBC Radio. Also brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. Groucho Marx. And you bet your life. Groucho sent me to see the new DeSoto. Groucho sent me and I love to drive this car. It's long and low and roomy or so handsome you can see. It's powerful and I'm so glad that Groucho sent me. Listen to him when you hear Groucho say. Go drive the new DeSoto at DeSoto Plymouth Dealers today. Here I am again with $2,000 for one of our couples. If any of them say the secret word, this uh, moth-eaten duck will fly down and pay him $100. The word tonight is food. Scram. <laughs> Out of it, <Edgy. laughs> George, proceed. Well, Groucho, we have a couple of young single people for you tonight. And uh, their names are Miss Barbara Schmidt and Mr. Mario DeRay. So would you come in, please, folks, and meet Groucho Marx. 
Welcome, welcome for the South of Plymouth. <laughs> Say the secret word and you'll divide a hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Barbara Schmidt and Mario Doremi uh, A. Uh, which one is Barbara? Oh, I am. That's uh, your Barbara. That's about the silliest question I guess I've ever asked on this show. <laughs> How old are you, uh, Barbara? I'm 18. 18, huh? A lovely age for a girl. In fact, it's a lovely age for a woman of 40. <laughs> Mr. You're not married, are you, Barbara? No, I'm not. You're not. Uh, are you engaged? No. Completely free agent? I'm completely <laughs> unattached. Is that so? Yeah. You mean your zip is broken? <laughs> well, something's holding you together, and I, I wish it was me. <laughs> Where are you from originally? Heaven? Originally, I'm from Albany, New York. Albany, yeah? Uh... Yes. And now I live in Pasadena. Oh. Well, uh, tell me, do you go to school, or do you have a job, or are you self-sustaining, or self-supporting, or what? No, I go to school, I go to UCLA, and I'm majoring in English. Oh. Oh, that's pretty good. Can you speak it at all? Uh... <laughs> now, why did you come to California to learn English? Don't they uh, speak English in Albany? <laughs> yes, well, I prefer the climate here in California. Oh. You, uh, Mario, is that your name? Mario. Yeah. Mario. You're not Mario Alonzo, are you? No, I'm Mario Dore. Are you related to Mario Lanza? No, but Al Dore is my brother. He's related to Mario Lanza? No, he's my brother. Your brother is Aldo Ray? Yeah. Well, congratulations. You're very lucky. <laughs> now then, who is Aldo Ray? <laughs> he's a movie star. He's a movie star? Oh, movie yeah. star. The only movie star I know is Francis X. Bushman. <laughs> You're a pretty big brute, Mario, aren't you? I'm big, yes. Yeah. I'm surprised you don't play football. Why is it? I do play football. I play for the University of Southern California. I play for the team. You play with USC? That's just what I said. I'm surprised you don't play football. <laughs> <laughs> you hate USC, uh, Bob? I don't hate it. No. But I'm for UCLA. Uh -huh. So am I. <laughs> No, only in the last five minutes. Oh. <laughs> Up to now, I was a fan of Rutgers. <laughs> now, Barbara, I imagine life must be interesting for a pretty girl in college. I've never been a pretty girl in college, but uh, I'm only guessing. Now, I wasn't even a pretty girl in high school. <laughs> Does anything exciting ever happen to you, Barbara? The most exciting thing that ever happened to me was I was chosen the 1954 Rose Queen, Pasadena. Oh, you were Queen of the Roses, yes. then. Oh, that's a very high honor. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Pretty tough competition. Yes, there? there was quite a bit. Well, enough. Let's get down to brass tacks. We've got enough of this historical stuff. For... Mario, will you marry this girl? No, I can't. You can? I'm going steady right now. Well, call her up and tell her you're going to marry Barbara. She'll understand. Women are very understanding that way. Well, say, your girl must be quite a dish, Mario, if you'll turn down the Rose Queen for her. How did you meet your inamorata? <laughs> well, I met her about two years ago at a dance, and I liked her, so a couple of weeks later I asked her out, and that's it. You've been going out ever since. If you were so crazy about it, why did you wait two weeks? Were you saving up a dime for the phone? I was <laughs> busy doing other things. Other things? <laughs> My boy, take it from an old hand in these matters. There are no other things. <laughs> well, where's this dazzler? Is she, is she out front here tonight? Is she no, she, no, she's in Pinole, California. That's about 400 miles north of L.A. And she she's 400 miles from here? Yeah. She's a secretary for the district attorney up there. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> you mean your girl is 400 miles away and you turn down a date with probably the most beautiful girl in America who is standing right next to you? I have to, I guess. <laughs> no choice. You know, that's like living in Las Vegas and going all the way to Cedar Rapids just to play bingo in a church bazaar. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Well, you're, you're an attractive couple, and Mario, if you're smart, you'll marry this girl as soon as she can support you. <laughs> I forgot to ask you one question. Do you have a fellow? No. Or did I ask you? No, Why you not? Well, I have many fellows. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I see. All right, let's play your bet you. <laughs> I had a fellow who wanted to meet you. It was me. <laughs> you both know the rules of this swindle? Uh, this game? <laughs> You selected the musical category. These are all top tunes of the last 20 years. And Fenneman, just keep looking right here. Huh? Okay, now what do you want to start with? 10, 20, all the way to 100. 50? 70. 70. 70? 70. Okay, this song is from the score of the musical Knickerbocker Holiday. Now you give me the title. <laughs> September song. September song is absolutely all right. Yeah. And you're off to a good start to have one hundred seventy dollars. Now, what are you going to take a fling at? Show me the Sammy Fiber. Eighty or eighty? We'll go eighty. Eighty. Eighty dollars. Sammy Kahn and Julie Stein wrote this song about ten years ago. What's the name of it? Play it. <laughs> Let it snow, let it snow. That's right. Let it snow is right. <laughs> now I have $250. What are you going to go for now? 90. We'll go for 90. 90. This song was a big hit a few years ago. Let's see if you can identify it. Wish you were here. Wish you were here, Wish you were here is right. $340. Last chance to beat the other couples. What are you going to go for? We'll go $100. $100. This song was written by Rogers and Hammerstein. What is the title of it? Play it, Jack. Hello, young lovers. Hello, young lovers. That's right. Now give them a big kiss. <laughs> and you're lined up with $420. There goes that girl and the district attorney and everything else. <laughs> well, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth oh, dealers. <laughs> Groucho sent me to see the new DeSoto. Groucho sent us and we want to drive this car. Oh, what a thrill you're going to feel when you're behind the wheel. DeSoto is the smartest car, smartest of the smart cars. It's so stylish, and now it's Groucho says. Let's drive the new DeSoto at DeSoto Plymouth Dealers today. From every angle, from here, from here, or from here, DeSoto is smart. DeSoto is the car that makes people stop and look. The car you'll be proud to have standing in front of your house. It's smart to own the smartest of the smart cars. Here is DeSoto's smart double cockpit instrument panel with a new flight control lever, convenient, but out of your way because it's used so seldom. And outside, accenting the forward look is the dramatic slash of color we call a color sweep. It's beautiful styling like this that makes the new DeSoto the smartest of the smart cars. Drive a DeSoto before you decide. Go drive the new DeSoto at DeSoto Plymouth Dealers today. Uh, Groucho, we have a man with an unusual occupation for you. He's Mr. Vern Lucius Cameron. His partner is a housewife. She's Mrs. Mariana Ehrlich. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your bet your life. Say the secret word and divide the hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Mrs. Mariana Ehrlich and Mr. Vane Lucius Cameron. A couple of pretty fancy monikers there. Mariana, where are you from? I am originally from Czechoslovakia, and I came of a friend in Portugal to the United States. You came with a friend from Portugal to the United States? I came with my best friend, my husband. Your best friend is uh -huh. your husband? Uh-huh. Well, that may be true in Czechoslovakia, but... <laughs> Whereabouts behind the Iron Curtain did you come from? Prague, Czechoslovakia. Prague, huh? Mm -hmm. You were poor but Prague at the time? Huh? <laughs> Could you give us some idea of your age, Mariana? 
I'd rather skip that question. You'd rather skip it? Well, skip around here and then give us your age. I heard once Louis Lafarge said that a girl who tells her age is liable to tell anything. Well, I expect to weigh many other things out of you before we throw it. You're uh, Jules Vine, Lucius Cameron. I huh? was named after Jules Vine. Is that right? Yes, and you're, you're... He was named first, and I was named after. Yeah, that's a good thing. <laughs> where are you from, Vine? I was born in Sioux City, Iowa. And oh, that's where that's all the lawyers come from, isn't it? Is it? I didn't know that. Well, the Sioux City, I imagine that's where... Oh, I see. <laughs> well, I spent three years in Iowa, three years in Kansas, and then spent most of my boyhood in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. What sort of work do you do? Groucho, I'm a hydrologist. You mean you eat only vegetables? No, sir. What's a, well, what a, is a hydrologist is a man who locates, or a woman who locates uh, underground liquids, oil or water. You mean like a bootlegger? <laughs> yes, if they're underground. Well, how do you how do you go about finding water? Well, I have instruments that I developed over a period of 32 years of locating, locating wells. Well, what makes this thing work? It uh, takes on a charge from the electrical aura around the body, and uh, this positive charge causes it to become attracted to the negative charge coming up by reflection from underground water. Well, you lost me quite some time ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you ever found any wells for people? Yes, sir, I've located thousands of them. I don't know how many thousands. Well, how, how much do you charge for finding water? Is that a gallon? Or? Well, the price ranges from $25 to $100 uh, $100? per well, or $100 a day flat rate. $100 a day? Yes, sir. Well, you must be finding water because you're certainly soaking somebody. Huh? That's right. <laughs> I'd like to go on talking to you two, but the time has come to play your bet your life. In the race for the $2,000, the first couple won $440, and the secret word is food. I'm sure you're familiar with this game. I don't have to explain yes, it. Sir, it this is a spelling quiz. This is an old-fashioned spelling bee. You get only one chance at the correct spelling and only one answer between you. I want you to spell the word and then pronounce it. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Spell it and then pronounce it. All right, what do you start with? 10, 20, 50, all the way to 100. 70. 70 suits me. 70 suits me, too. All right, spell the word lieutenant, meaning an officer in military service. L-I-E-U-T-E-N-A-N-T. Right. This kid's from Czechoslovakia, yeah. <laughs> huh? Imagine. Now I have $170. What are you going to go for? 80. 80 is you, okay. Fine. Sure. Spell the word alumina, meaning a light silver white metal. Metal. A-L-U-M-I-N. One moment. Aluminum. L-A-L-U-U-M-I. N-U-N. That's right. Right. You now have $250. You went to night school, huh? I did. Yeah. I went to night school. And day school, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to spell better than to pronounce. 90. Well, spell the word fictitious, meaning not real, counterfeit, not genuine. F-I-C-T-I-T-O-U-S. -I -I no, I-O-U-S. F-I-C-T-I-T-I-O-U-S. F-I-C-T-I-T-I-O-U-S. -I -I All right, now, -S. decide one answer between you now. <coughs> what are you going to say? It's I-O-U-S, I'm sure. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. All right, then you spell it. F-I-C-T-I-T-I-O-U-S. Fictitious. That's right, that's right. <laughs> Now I have three hundred forty dollars. Some illiterate in the front row is hollering you are wrong. <laughs> I trust. There's your last chance to beat the other couples. What are you going to go for? Hundred. Hundred. That's right. All right with you. Uh, That's right. All right. Spell the word penitentiary, meaning a state or federal prison. P E N I T I T I E N. No. Penitentiary. P E N I. No, P E. Yes, that's right. P E N I. T E N. All right, come on now. P I A R Y. That's right. Oh. Now spell it. One of you spell it. P E N I T E N T I A R Y. That is right. <laughs> and you went all the way. You wind up with four hundred forty dollars. Well, thanks and good luck to the Soda Plymouth dealers. Thank you so much.
we invited some girls who worked for an aircraft plant to our factory tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected June French to be on the show. And her partner is Mr. Albert Hall. So folks, would you come in please and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Mr. Albert Hall and uh, June French. June, uh, how old are you? I'm 21. 21, yes, and sir. what's your hometown? Mineola, Texas. Mineola, Texas? Is there a town named Mineola? Yes, sir. Where is that near? Oh, it's about 80 miles east of Dallas. You mean, well, how far is that from Neiman Marcus? That is Neiman Marcus. Oh. Are you married? Yes. You are? Yes. Well, you're pretty young to be married, aren't you? I've been married six years. You were married when you were 15? Yes. Boy, they catch him early down there, don't they? Eh? No, I caught him early. Oh. Well, at least you're honest enough to admit it. Most women are not. <laughs> Mr. Hall, uh, where are you from? Originally from Kansas. Born in Kansas. <laughs> Farm. Well, you don't have to get angry about it. Eh? <laughs> This guy's trying to hypnotize me. Huh? <laughs> I'm afraid to ask him any more questions. Did you grow up on a farm back there in Kansas, sir? No, I left when I was 10 years old. Uh-huh. Your name is Albert Hall? Yes. Well, that's in London. Isn't that where the musicians uh, play in the concerts? Oh, yes. Are you, uh, did you know that? Were you oh, named sure. after that place? Evidently. I, I didn't select the name. Oh. <laughs> such a soft job up here. Huh? <laughs> the last time I come down here without my blackjack. <laughs> Where did you go when you left the farm? Lincoln, Nebraska. <laughs> what were you doing there? Well, I went to school there. And when I quit school, I got a job on the Nebraska State Journal as a printer's devil. <laughs> Will you ask him the next question? <laughs> you were a printer's devil. Well, why did you get fired? Uh, maybe you weren't the type, huh? I didn't get fired. Oh. Al, are you married? Oh, yes. You are, huh? How long have you been married, Al? Forty-two years. Is your wife out here with you? Yes, she's in the audience. Uh -huh. Oh. Well, what sort of work have you been doing lately? Uh, well, homicide? I came to Seattle and I got a job on the Seattle You time. imagine if he doesn't win any money here, what's going to happen to me? <laughs> I'm leaving long before that. <laughs> You say you went to Seattle and you got a job on the paper? Seattle Times in the composing room. I see. <laughs> and how long were you there? Fifteen <laughs> years. Maybe I can out frighten them. <laughs> Boy, would he fit in all of Dickens' stories, huh? <laughs> Well, June, what kind of work do you do? I'm a messenger. I feel safe on asking you. <laughs> You're a messenger? Well, what do you do as a messenger? Do you deliver messages? No, I deliver blueprints and supplies and food or anything else to, to put the engineers want. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> you said food, so you and Gargantua each get $50. <laughs> All right, all right, beat it, Doc. Now, who do you deliver these things to? To the engineers. Uh-huh. Well, how are you dressed? Uh, do you wear this kind of an outfit? Uh? Oh, 
fine, yes. Skirts, blouses, sweaters. Uh -huh. You know, better be careful. You know, I know something about engineers. They all have plans of their own, you know. <laughs> Do these engineers... <laughs> Maybe I can charm them. Mr. Hall, I am reluctant to do this, but let's get back to you. Uh... <laughs> what are you doing in Hollywood, and who are you frightening? <laughs> what are you doing here at present, Mr. Hall? Well, things got tough up in the mountains. No money. I came to Hollywood to find out how they make money. <laughs> Well, how do they make money? Uh, I walk up and down Hollywood Boulevard. And I come to the conclusion that 50% of them there are on relief. <laughs> and then I think the other 40% are going around to these banks and loan companies. There's three or four in every box. I think you've got something there. Now, have you decided on the type of work that you'd like to do in Hollywood? What would you like to do, Al, as long as you're out here now? You're not doing anything. Well, what you're doing there looks kind of soft. <laughs> well, I, it is, but I don't want it to get around, that's all. Just, uh, I guess the jig is up. <laughs> well, Al, the time is up for loose chatter. Now, let's play You Bet Your Life. In the race for the $2,000, the first two couples are tied with $440. Uh, you both understand the rules of the game. Now, you select the geography. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Let it you see. All right. How much? She says 100. 100. Okay. What country is separated by 1,000 miles of the Republic of India? Pakistan. Pakistan is right. <laughs> well, you're off to a good start. You now have $200. Now, just so that we don't have any confusion on the next questions, consult before you answer, because he might have said something else. And, and you wouldn't have won the money. All right, what are you going to go for now? $90. Now, one answer. What great river is sacred to the Hindus? It empties into the Bay of Bengal. Ganges. Ganges is right. All right, you now have $290. Uh, hey, you're pretty lucky to have a gal like that, oh, wouldn't you? I always been lucky all my life, Groucho. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Al. Now, what are you going to go for? 80. Yeah, yeah, that's... 80. Right. The city of Buffalo, New York, is located on which of the Great Lakes? Erie. Lake Erie is right. What happened to that talk I gave you? You now have $370. Now, I, what are you going to go for? <laughs> yeah. This is your last chance to beat the other couple. Sure. $70. Yeah. $70. What is the largest city in Finland? It is also the capital. Now, one answer. Talk it over, please. Helsinki? I don't know. Helsinki? That's right. Helsinki. That's right. And you'll wind up with $440. And that means that all three I of our couples tonight... I get everybody married in this show if they're married or not. It doesn't make any difference. <laughs> that means that all three of our couples tonight, in just one minute, will get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question. Everybody tie. <laughs> tie. Now, I have a question for you. And it's a very important one. Is your car safe to drive? Can you see safely? Can you steer safely? Can you stop safely? Well, if you're not absolutely sure, take your car to your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. You make certain your car is a safe car. You'll make an expert check of your brakes, tires, headlights, taillights, steering, and all other important safety features. He'll make sure your car is safe and dependable and tell you if you need any adjustments or repairs. And if you do, 
He'll make them quickly and at a reasonable cost. His technicians are specially trained, and they use the very latest equipment and factory-approved methods. They'll make your car a safe car, from headlights that enable you to see clearly at night to taillights that enable other drivers to see you. Everything that's important to your safety will be put in tip-top condition, and it won't take long. In a short time, your DeSoto Plymouth dealer will make your car a safe car, and at a reasonable cost. No matter what make of car you drive, visit your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. Make sure your car is a safe car. Well, Roger, here are the three couples all tied for the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question. We've given them little slips of paper. They'll write down one answer between them, and uh, if they all get it right, we'll uh, split the money among all of them. For $2,000, what was the name of the famous English jurist whose commentaries are fundamental in any study of English law? <laughs> All right, what are the answers? Mr. DeRay? <laughs> Barbara Schmidt and Mario Doray's answer is nothing. June French and Al Hall's answer is nothing. Mariana Ehrlich and Vine Cameron's answer is also nothing. This one has got Hoyle, but that's wrong. It's Sir William Blackstone, a very famous man <laughs> in the history of jurisprudence. I'm sorry you all lost. That means the big question next week will be worth $2,500. Well, they lost the big money, but they all did pretty well in the, well in the quiz, didn't they, George? Yes, all the way. Each, How much did they each win? Each couple won $440. Well, congratulations to all of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight and to both of you and to everybody else. Okay. Friends, go in to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. Be sure to tune in next week, same time, same station, for Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life on television. On radio every Wednesday night. And don't miss the big Chrysler Corporation TV show each week on another network. George Fenneman signing off with a message from the National Safety Council. The month of May has been designated as National Car Safety Check Month. To check accidents, take your car in for a safety check without delay.